Let's start with a bit of background about this instrument. The Concert 8 has the reputation, uh, not just in present day, but going back many, many decades, as being the finest upright piano in the world. Now that is not something that I throw out there very lightly, or even as kind of a, a Bechstein dealer trying to puff up my own product. I mean, you can see writing about this in the Larry Fine uh, piano book, in the current piano buyer, in numerous articles um, that are sort of industry watching articles that talk about the piano industry, constantly reference the Concert 8 as being the benchmark. And now that I've really spent um, my first considerable amount of time in front of a Concert 8, because we just recently got this, I can see why. This instrument is incredibly impressive uh, and as you know as we mentioned in the intro we're going to be talking about the action we're going to be talking about the tone we're going to be talking about the construction of the instrument but just as a musical experience moving back and forth between a concert eight and we've got a C Bechstein um, 192 right next to us the tone is not that different I mean that's just absolutely insane to be able to say with a straight face and mean it so uh, we're in front of a really genuinely special musical instrument uh, and once again thank you very very much for joining us the Concert 8 uh, is made entirely in Germany. It's made entirely by hand at the uh, C. Bechstein factory. And this is actually the only upright piano that they label as a part of their concert series. Now, I, uh, I guess, uninformally refer to even the Residence series uprights as part of their concert class because it is the upper tier they use all of the same types of woods that go into the concert class, but for Bechstein, this is the only one that really rises, I guess, to the occasion um, of, or uh, qualifies uh, in their eyes as being worthy of the concert label. The Concert 8 has been around um, for, for a, uh, most of Bechstein's existence. It's certainly not a new model, but this is a model that, that received some renewed focus just within the last 10 years. They kind of uh, soft relaunched uh, the model. There was some uh, minor updates to the scale design uh, and it, it kind of follows in the path of what has happened uh, with the grand piano. So a refresh of the type of hammers that are being used, um, uh, sort of an update to the precision and the cabinetry um, and the, the whole tonal philosophy of the instrument uh, has, has been updated a little bit. Um, but needless to say, if you are in the market for a, uh, an upright piano and you've got the budget and the space, there's no way that you could avoid uh, a Concert 8 uh, in, in terms of uh, your shopping, in terms of a target uh, that you might want to be investigating. And quite frankly, if you even were in the market for a grand piano, a smaller grand piano, something in the five to five and a half foot range, and you were looking at a budget of you know, $60,000, $70,000, I have to be honest, I mean, if you can get over the aesthetic difference of it being an upright versus grand, the output of this instrument is just nothing short of astounding. It's just, it's just crazy good. What a treat, honestly, it's one, what a treat to play this piano. Let's deal with the action. Bechstein upright actions have always been part of their charm, I guess, or part of their appeal, uh, because they spend an inordinate amount of time 
uh, regulating and weighting the actions at the factory. So that on its own set them apart from many other um, upright actions out there. Just the sheer number of t amount of time they spend fanatically uh, prepping this instrument. Much in the same way as you would expect, say, a $100,000 or up grand piano to have their actions regulated and weighted literally perfectly. It's just unusual to have that kind of scrutiny applied to an upright piano. So the uh, Concert 8 has over 170 um, measurable uh, person hours or man hours at the factory of hand workmanship that gets applied to it. And a good amount of that goes into the regulating, the weighting, and the assembly of its action. That's one of the main uh, distinguishing features of this instrument, just how absolutely sensitive and fluid this action is. And when you put an action like that on a large frame, it's a 52 inch piano or just slightly under 52 inches, uh, and the dynamic output is that big, when you have an action that's this sensitive driving it, it's so much fun because uh, it, it, you can jump from the most extreme ranges of volumes with very little effort uh, and it's almost kind of shocking. You're not used to it on an upright piano. <laughs> I mean, just the tiniest little gesture in your right hand. piano but it is uh, it's it's total adventure to play this instrument I mean um, you wind up uh, instantly um, pulling and tugging and, and um, pushing the volumes in, in different directions and you just normally wouldn't because your ears picking up all of these different uh, nuances that that are there getting back to the action they call this their gold action so even though it's an upright action it's getting the same quality of wood uh, the drying uh, regimes that are used for the wood it's getting the same quality of hammers uh, which is a dark walnut um, crown hammer um, and obviously they're all uh, hand shaped and uh, immaculately voiced at the factory that's the same grade of hammer uh, that's going on to their concert class grand and uh, now that Beckstein is making their own hammers, and they've been doing this for a few years, the Concert 8 has its own hammer set. So in other words, this exact configuration of hammer, the weight of the hammer, the, the length of the, of the tails, all of that stuff is totally unique to the Concert 8, which I think is just so cool. It's, again, this is not something that's happening very often on something especially as limited production of that. So we know what's going on with the hammer. Uh, it's very, very uh, dense but light wood uh, with, with the walnut, expensive as well for anyone who knows the price of wood out there. Uh, it's double felted, um, it's completely uh, you know, hand pressed and hand created. Um, and then as we said, we've got the gold action, beautifully regulated and unbelievably sensitive uh, for an upright. I should also speak to the weight because if somebody is used to an upright piano being a little bit lighter than a grand, you're not going to get that on the Concert 8. The Concert 8 is weighted like a grand. I mean, when you're, you know, playing middle C and just... I didn't measure it out myself, but I wouldn't be surprised if that's coming right in at around 51, 52 grams. Yeah, and I, I, it definitely feels like we're still sort of in the 50-ish range, even up at the top. So for people who are looking for this instrument to uh, give them about the same uh, type of uh, muscle training uh, as a grand, you're in luck. If you're looking for this to be a super light piano, eh, probably not your first choice. Again, I, I want to emphasize, I'm not saying the piano is heavy or clunky or arduous. I'm just saying they've weighted this so that it's truly a grand class um, action uh, in its weight and its response and obviously in the quality of the components. Let's move on to sound. If I could describe the Concert 8 sound in one uh, word, it would be color. When I am drawing notes out of this instrument,
every note has so many overtones happening and those overtones are perfectly structured. I mean, there's nothing out of place. There's no uh, kind of little wisp happening on top of any of the notes. It's, it's crystal clear. Beautiful bell-like uh, tone, which is a specific set of the harmonics that the piano is slightly um, reinforcing or slightly bringing out more than others. Sustain as well, which we're going to talk about when we get into the overall design of the instrument. Oh, oh that's lovely. It's kind of like playing a choir. When I play this, I used to be a church organist when I was much younger, and the, uh, the resonance that playing this piano and even just try it is so gorgeous that it kind of just makes me want to play hymns. Just beautiful. So we've got color, we've got sustain, uh, and that color is even throughout the entire range. So it's not as though your tenor, your lower tenor, and your upper tenor is the only spots where you're getting that roundness. Gorgeous, gorgeous roundness up at the top, even. And then listen to those thirds, and even in a lower range. Yeah, so clarity, separation, color, sustain. I mean, honestly, it's, it's, it's hard to poke a hole in this. It, once you play this, you just think to yourself, well, every piano should sound like this. Well, be nice if every budget was as flexible to <laughs> afford a piano like this. Uh, maybe one day. Um, anyway, let's keep on moving. I'm gushing a little bit too much. Uh, so where does that color come from? You know, because this doesn't happen by magic. If every piano could sound like this, I'm sure every manufacturer would love for that to be the case, but this is cold hard science and engineering that actually gives us the tone that we are hearing. It's just not magic and it's not um, simply spending a whole lot of time on a piano it doesn't automatically make it better. Uh, man hours uh, and uh, craftsmanship are only part of uh, the solution here. A lot of it, as I said, comes down to design, and let's talk about that. So firstly, right through the whole piano, we've got A graphs, all the way up to the top. We're not talking about a capo uh, bar, a tension bar. So what do the A graphs do? Well, it allows the designer of the piano to precisely um, uh, set the resonating lengths of all three strings per note, like down to the tenth of a millimeter. Uh, and so that really helps to eliminate any kind of false beating. It really helps uh, to um, contain uh, false uh, harmonics that might be coming off just on the other side of the capo bar, which we all know uh, occasionally happens and you wind up having to mute them. Uh, so we've got uh, just precision in terms of the resonating lengths of the strings. That makes a big difference. Um, a second feature that's really critical is this piano is using a bridge system which is just as intricate as what they put on their grand piano. So we've got a maple capped bridge and then we've got a vertically laminated bridge um, throughout the piano. There are just a handful of instruments on the planet that actually put a vertically laminated bridge on an upright piano. It's very expensive. Um, it takes a lot of, of drawing and a lot of precision and a lot of carpentry to make those bridges. And so it's not surprising that we're seeing this on the Concert 8. Talking about the soundboard on this instrument, 
uh, brings us to an even more exclusive uh, topic because the soundboard material on this piano is from the Val de Fiamme. This is red spruce from the Val de Fiamme. This is exactly the same spruce source as the Stradivarius violins. Um, Fazioli uh, buys soundboards from Sarisa, which gets their wood from uh, exactly the same uh, valley in northern Italy. All of the C. Beckstein concert level grands um, get their wood from this source. It's a highly regulated source of wood. It's very difficult to work with, um, but you can achieve some of the most dry, uh, most dense, and most consistent spruce of anywhere in the world, and it just explodes with energy. It's something that preserves and, and really, or I should say, it transduces the energy more efficiently than almost any other type of spruce. And it's in this piano. Um, I, I haven't researched this thoroughly, but I'm pretty sure this is the only upright piano in the world that actually uses it. Several grands do. I think this is the only upright, which is very, very special. It's also a tapered soundboard, which means that we're getting very little energy loss as we approach the edges. And then last but not least, let's talk about the cabinetry. And I'm not, I, I'm not referring to uh, the exterior appearance. When I'm talking cabinetry and carpentry, we actually mean sort of the, the substructure of, of wood uh, that holds all of this together. And we'll get some B-roll so that you can see just how precise this instrument is constructed on the back. Six full-size back posts, all of solid hardwood. Um, we've got those back posts are mounted directly uh, to the frame. And then uh, they are using uh, almost like a bridge-like material or an inner rim type material uh, to, uh, they're kind of like um, tension bars or pressure bars uh, that help uh, to just activate some of the less um, naturally active parts of the soundboard. You can see that very clearly. And then I know it's just aesthetics, but on the top left at the back is a beautifully uh, milled in uh, Beckstein logo uh, that's just an, an extra nice little touch of, of elegance and precision on the instrument. Um, it is available with the Sostenuto pedal. This particular uh, model uh, doesn't have it, or I should say this example doesn't have it. The middle pedal on this piano is just the mute bar, but it is available with the Sostenuto pedal for people who are interested. So that really is uh, kind of a, a quick look at just an extraordinary musical instrument. It happens to be an upright. Um, and now that I've uh, spent a couple of hours playing the famous Concert 8, I'd have to agree, this is the best uh, upright piano I've ever played, hands down. Um, I would encourage anybody who is remotely close to uh, this type of a budget, um, whether it's an upright or grand, to really do yourselves a favor and try and get to a showroom where you can see this, um, because before you make any decisions, uh, you need to know exactly what this could give you musically, because it's pretty unique. Um, Thank you very much for your time and your attention. Um, hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please be sure to check out the playing video where all we're gonna do is just um, you know, spend five or 10 minutes uh, giving you uh, some music uh, on this instrument. And of course, thanks very much for supporting the channel. Like we said at the beginning, if you haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, we'd really appreciate you clicking on that subscribe button. We'll see you back again. I'm Stu Harrison from Marion Pianos and have yourself a great day. Sun is rising.